So when I first conceived of Afterlife for the Alice Gallery in Seattle, the question that drove the work was really how have Asian Pacific American and indigenous artists and communities uh, practice different modes of surviving? Now in 2020, these questions of survival, what do we do? How do we live together? How do we create other structures is even more important. I hate to you know, have been ahead of the curve in trying to curate a show um, that responded to these multiple kinds of issues. But I'm glad that we have the opportunity again to present work of artists that I think can really help us imagine alternatives, different ways for all of our communities, indigenous, black, brown, trans and queer communities, especially in San Francisco and the larger Bay Area. Um, some inspiration again, and thoughts on how to survive it was really exciting to find out that there would be an opportunity to really change and transform it um, to be public presentations that would be public projections as well as window front displays and to have all of the work being really publicly accessible um, and especially after everything that's happened this summer with race rebellions with uh, wildfires and with the ongoing COVID pandemic um, this actually felt like the right move and the right thing to do you can walk safely and socially distanced around the entire building, as well as the adjacent Blue Shield Theater. Um, the other way is uh, through online. You can go to ybca.org, where there's going to be a full 3D walkthrough. And then some artists will only be living on the online format. And so I really hope that, you know, whether you experience it online or in person, that you also have that experience of connection. Um, and hopefully you can talk about it with others. Right? What is confusing to you? What is inspiring to you? What uh, different versions of resilience and resourcefulness um, that you've seen in these presentations um, you might want to incorporate on your own.